Are you the kind of person who doesn't know how much to tip when you're overseas? Well, if you are, then you're in good company. Today we'll be sharing stories from our past, playing some games, and maybe even performing a live sketch or two. Let's hire a removalist and feel obligated to help them carry your personal effects. Grab your knitting needles and a blanket, because it's time for three old friends to sit around and sew a new patch into their quilt of friendship. So join me, Dion, under the covers with Christian. Welcome to Patchwork. And Josh. Welcome to Patchwork. Now, before we get started, Dion, we were here recently at my mother's house where we record Welcome to Patchwork, as many of our listeners will know. Mm -hmm. And I saw you because where we record, the studio faces directly opposite the toilet upstairs. Now, we all know this toilet as where Josh loves to take a shit. (laughs) Yeah. But last time we were here... Dion, you felt very comfortable in that you peed with the door completely open, <laughs> right? And I thought, you know, that's fine. We're on yeah. a level onto ourselves, yeah. yeah? So you don't have to worry about people catching you. Mm-hmm. But today, earlier, Josh and I were upstairs and we heard a very loud... <laughs> very loud. Because this house is quite cavernous. Yeah. And I thought, that's no tap. <laughs> <laughs> that's no gently flowing creek. No, Dion... Tell me, did you close the door when you were downstairs in the main bathroom? <laughs> I am. So, so just to reiterate, we're on the first floor and I pissed on the lower floor. <laughs> I am amazed that you heard me from there. I'm surprised if the neighbours couldn't. So for me, like, so you, I, I looked around and your mum wasn't home. Sure. I don't care if you guys hear me piss or not. Can I say, okay, so <laughs> you took enough time to look around and consider if... Christian's mother was home. Yes. But closing the door, bridge too far. I just thought, I don't know, I like being liberated. Christian, it's the same thing of like wandering around the house naked and stuff. You know, you don't like doing but that. Again, I like I like to feel not liberated. Your house. Yeah. Do you know what really annoys me and has started irking me more now that we're in a different office bathroom because we've recently moved, is why in public bathrooms have they chosen that to be the quietest place oh, on earth? Yeah. Always get some music. Yeah. Put Anything on. Wait, what else would you put on but music? Sounds of people in the toilet. The yeah. <laughs> Just sort of, it's like Other smoke people. and mirrors. <laughs> throw, throw the sound around. Is someone <laughs> washing their hands for a really yeah. long time. <laughs> That'd be great. Just to make me feel comfortable. But... Just play some wind. Play anything. Wind. Yeah, yeah. My, my bigger question to you though, Dion, is what is with leaving the door open? I always close the door. Mm. Why Why are you even... Why is that in your brain to it's not true. close it? It's like to me mm. when I get in a car, the seatbelt goes on. Me, when I go to the bathroom to take to go to the toilet... <laughs> the seatbelt goes on. <laughs> to, to take what, Josh? It's going to be a rocky ride. <laughs> Um, I have not put that much thought into it. I'd be very interested to hear from patchworkers if they prefer. Maybe it's uh, the um, wind. Maybe it's the through draft. Really? <laughs> yeah, oh. taking the smell of my urine to another room. <laughs> I that would know. be good if you dropped. You- I'd love it if you had <laughs> dropped your pants as well <laughs> and your legs were exposed. <laughs> Do you know what I think it Can is? Can someone come and hold this for me? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I think it is? I think... so. I routinely think about the concept of a public toilet and I think it's actually incredibly funny. that There's a central place yeah. where humans go to to defecate. I yep. think that's really funny. But there's one thing funnier than that and some people will know this about me. Do you know what the one of the funniest know, things... Yeah. Do you know what it is? Clowns. No. Uh, <laughs> the funniest thing to me is watching a dog take a shit. You are obsessed. I, I find it so funny. Funny. At first, I thought it was some weird kind of fetish. Nah. And because I'd see Dion just kind of sh- sh- shirk away and surreptitiously <laughs> nah. take his camera out and then <laughs> zoom in on animals who are pooing. No. And it's just, you'd always do it now. I think the look on the dog's face, the posture, the fact that it has... <laughs> this is the bit. This is the bit. It has to shit in front of everyone <laughs> naked. It has to do it in front of everyone naked. And of course you're going to have that look on your face. Are you hoping that someone films you while you're standing up? <laughs> no, but imagine, like, it, it's it's like a dog has to deal with being naked all the time, <laughs> let alone doing a shit. 
That's what he's thinking. That's what the dog's thinking. <laughs> yeah. Again, no privacy. Again, it's the look around. It's that peek around the <laughs> shoulder. I don't even know if a dog has shoulders. But it's a, peek, <laughs> it's a peek around the shoulder. It's like, I can't believe you're doing this to me, owner. The best the best things about those videos, and I've seen some of that you've taken, yeah. like you'll get three or four seconds and then just laughter yeah. just starts erupting from behind the camera. The other day, I was riding my bike into work and I spotted a greyhound from afar that was just in the process of squatting. It was a very oh, thin, wow. thin greyhound and saw a greyhound poo for like 15 seconds. For the rest of my ride to work, I had a big fat smile <laughs> on my face. <laughs> just to get back to the original point of the new office bathroom, the, the second thing that annoys me the most about it is that they use such shiny tiles that even at the urinals, you can see your reflection. <laughs> Why don't you just use a matte finish? Yeah, it's you know, in weird. any bathroom, all tiles should be matte or just painted walls. Do they clean as well if they're matte finished? Do they clean? Clean as like when a wipe oh, down as well. I wouldn't think so. You'd um, have to you'd have to leave the door open for that. <laughs> you know what was great in um in Egypt on my trip recently at one of the um airport bathrooms that we had, that guy was cleaning one of them. And it was it's very different to back here. <laughs> Literally, just a bucket full of soapy water, just <laughs> tossing it over everything. <laughs> oh, Just really? throwing it everywhere. It's like, That's... I'm cleaning, cleaning the wall, cleaning this. And it's exactly what I want for my bathroom when I get a house one day, is to be able to turn a hose on just yeah. do the entire thing. What a great and idea. Then just, uh, that's what they do with public bathrooms. Yeah, 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 they, they do. Do you know the rooms themselves convert into like little pits, little pits with jet sprays and they wash themselves and the water just drains what? into a... Yep. No, they don't. Yes, they do. It's unbelievable. It, it, <laughs> it's so unbelievable that it might not be true. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, uh, there was a dinner that was being organized, a bunch, us and a few of our other friends, and there's a group WhatsApp thread that we're all in and they're all in. And so the day before, um, Dion jumped into the thread and they're like, hey guys, are we still on for dinner tomorrow night? And everyone kind of said, oh no, you know, maybe I'll catch up with you later. No, I'm not good for dinner. I've got stuff on. I'll come mm-hmm. later. Mm-hmm. And then I was the sole person who was like, yeah, I'd love to go to dinner still, Dion. Really would love it after work. Go have some dinner. And then catch up with everyone afterwards for some drinks. So then Dion, after hearing everyone dropping out, was like, oh, no, nah, I'm just going to go home and go back in and meet everyone later. Yeah. And so I said, come in and meet me for dinner. The yep. dinner that you've organized and that you wanted to have, but then you didn't get quorum of the right people. So nope. you thought, going out. Nope, 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 nope. So I didn't organize the dinner initially. It wasn't my idea. What do you mean? Another member of the group organized it. So you're wrong there. So no, it you wasn't my... Them, or- you no, no, sent no. the message. Guys, guys, I know you want to have an argument <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So initially, the dinner idea was put forward by Chris, who usually puts forward the dinner the dinner idea. Then that was a few weeks ago, and you had some people opt in and say, oh, yes, I'm going to dinner. You had some people that were silent, like Christian. It was very frustrating when you're trying to organize something. <laughs> very clear. Said no at the outset. <laughs> Didn't want to be a part of it. <laughs> yeah, wasn't available. <laughs> I didn't see it. Anyway, um, and then the date got moved to a week later and people were like, yep, I'm in for dinner, in for dinner, in for dinner. And then a couple of days later when dinner was rolling around, I was like, hey, who's who's in for dinner? Like, is this still... I, I wrote, is this still happening? Meaning, oh. is the group dinner still happening? Not, am <laughs> I eating dinner that night with one other person? <laughs> The reality is, is that that was meant to be a group dinner. There's no reason why a group dinner should then transform into a one-on-one candlelit dinner with someone that I see way too much of anyway. Oh, great. (laughs) Also, someone who you see way too much of, who you haven't seen for three weeks, who's been on holiday. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But for me, the original idea was that it was a group dinner. All of these people piked, which kind of pissed me off because the original person, Chris, who organized the dinner, he was like, oh, I'll just meet you guys at nine it's like he organized it (laughs) so for me as an out as true outsider here even though you're inside the whatsapp thread but i wasn't one of our friends but i wasn't (laughs) coming to the event and and the the idea of this thing being organized as a dinner and then drinks afterwards and then devolving to hey we'll just meet you out later yeah i think that number one is bizarre yeah, you can't bizarre. transform the invite because people have said, well, I'm going to leave work early, whatever it might be. But Dion, considering people were going to meet you out later, yep. 
Doesn't that just mean, well, I'm going to be out later anyway. I may as well help the friend out who's kind of stuck Ah, in the city. That's what the motivation was. And I knew it at the time. The motivation was that you didn't want to go home. Is that correct? The motivation was... That was almost more important than meeting me for dinner. No, the motivation was some of my friends wanted to organise dinner. Absolutely. I'll jump in, put my hand up. I would like to see any of those people in any arrangement. Everyone else dropped out. I was like, well, at least one person who sent the message to me that says, hey, guys, I want to do the dinner. No. Are we still doing no. the dinner? I asked, is dinner still on? Meaning, is this group dinner thing still on? Okay. I think it's completely reasonable that the plans change based on, like, the whole the whole concept changing. No, no. So- <laughs> Not the concept. It's still dinner. <laughs> So if you, so to me, you saying that is, I want to go to dinner. Are you saying yep. that you've said, is dinner still on tomorrow night? And you had two people, three people. Yeah. That would How be, many? Two people would be the quorum. And so oh, one person, wow. one person it's kind of like, oh, it's not what it originally was. I might as well just go home and I'll see them anyway. And we hung out and we had a great night. I stayed out later than <laughs> I've ever stayed out in the last three years. What I don't get is all of those people in that group I would be more than happy to spend time with yep. group or single. Didn't bother agree. me. Agree. No, no, I totally agree you with that. You disagree because you did come no, to no, dinner no, with no, just no. me. No, I think I was a bit... I, no, I was annoyed that the original organiser of the dinner had decided to pull out. And their justification was that it hadn't been confirmed. So this is what he did. He said, hey guys, do you want to do dinner? You had people going in, in, in. That is confirmed. And yeah. yet he was the one. So you should be having a go at him, the organiser. Oh. You thought I was the organiser. I did not organise it. I was just checking in to see if other people were coming along to the dinner. If I may play devil's advocate once more, <laughs> are you saying then that if someone organises an event yep. and then everyone's in and then that person pulls out of the event, the event crumbles? <laughs> That's a good question. I think it's incumbent on that organiser to make the event rail, rail, hail or shine. (laughs) If the trains are running. (laughs) I think that that's the thing about WhatsApp threads is that everything's, Mm. it's all very non-committal. That's why what you need to do immediately is send the calendar invite out. It's true. Yeah. Send it out to the people who have said yes. Oh. That locks them in. And that's yeah. the problem because people think of two weeks ahead yep. and they go, yeah, yeah, my calendar's yep. free. You get to the week of and all of a sudden it's filled up with something and they go, oh, sorry, guys, I can't do it anymore. Anyway, the last thing I'll add is that Josh then, in response to this WhatsApp thread to me not coming out to dinner, Josh then proceeded to write, <laughs> to write this out. Um, I think as the original organiser, it's absolutely your responsibility to pick up and continue with dinner plans, no matter who confirms, unless there's 100% pullout rate. Christian, do you agree that it doesn't matter what group it is, unless there is 100% pullout rate? And I remember, I didn't originally organise the dinner. Can, uh, can I say, Dion, that by sending the message, hey, is dinner still happening? You have usurped yeah, the role so. of dinner organizer. You are the successor to the throne. No, you I are. haven't. That's not true. Yes, you're in direct lineage. No, because the dinner organizer, for all intents and purposes I know, is still going to the dinner. I'm just checking in to imagine, see who else is coming along. Imagine if you didn't confirm and you just turned up somewhere. Guys, I thought we'd met this place for oh, dinner. Because if no, no venue's yeah, been chosen, really. That's true. Like, it's fine. I agree. It's fine Ooh. to send the follow up. Is no venue? Yeah, venue, is that what you're about yeah. to very important, Josh. It's fine to send the follow-up to be like, hey, is this still on? Because we clearly don't have enough details. My problem, Josh, was that I thought that your, your dominant motivation was not wanting to go home rather than, because you didn't want to go home and then come back into the city, I thought that was your dominant motivation rather than having dinner with me. That's fascinating. So you were so pissed off at me. No. They go, oh, I don't want to play to your little game, Porter. <laughs> no, no. Okay? No, no, I'm not no, going to no. do you. I'm no, not no. going to hang out with my no. friends. No, no, it wasn't. It, I was pissed off at the situation. And it's something that Christian's raised where mm. people will organize something. And when Christian's really good with this stuff. When he's in, he's in. Like he locks it in. He doesn't org- He doesn't double park. The calendar invite. Yeah, the calendar Changed invite. Changed my life. So I will learn next time. So, yeah, send out the calendar invite. Send out the location. I think it locks people in. Absolutely. But what, what's your what's your settled opinion? Did I have to go to dinner that to night? Be honest, Remember, Dion, I didn't organise it. As I said, I've been playing devil's advocate. But Josh, in the same vein, I do appreciate a group is different to a one on one. The group dynamic is what we were looking forward to. We hadn't caught up yeah. as a group for a really long time. Yeah. You guys see each other very often, and I also love the 
the one to two hour break at home to set yourself up for the night. There you go. Yeah. Quick wash, quick relax, yep. change your clothes, exactly put your bags down. Yep, it was perfect. And then that equips me to have a really good late night with you where we dance. <laughs> but ah, but that's not, no, the break between though, that's not always, on a Friday, I think you're much yeah. better the roll on out of work. Out of work, roll into a drink, roll into dinner, roll into more drinks. Yeah, Actually, just true. just on this topic, a yeah, friend we're of talking mine, about a friend, it. Of mine, <laughs> a friend of mine that night actually taught me something, and I can't believe this was never taught to me. He said at eleven thirty at night, "Hey guys, are we going dancing? We're going to have a big night." And I always <laughs> waited too long. It always like right. got to maybe twelve thirty or one, where it's kind of people pitched to me. Hey, I think he honestly, I reckon he pitched at like eleven p.m. Right. He's like, yeah. hey, and it was like that is such good notice, such good notice. That is and yet, great. Did you leave at that time? Uh no, no. About half an hour later, and then it was great. Do you know what it also guarantees you access to the venue? Yeah, yes. seeing the dance yes. floor evolve, yep. being there to get drinks earlier. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with that. That's a great point. Is it, Josh, were you aware of that 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 whole idea of go, of calling it early? I didn't know it was a scheme of his because I normally just ride something out and then when it gets mm. to the end of it, think about the next thing. But that's great, like to give the people like yourself, Dion, who yep. need that early notice, yep. to be that's like, right. hey, <laughs> prepare your body. Yeah. We might be doing stuff a bit later. It's true. Prepare your body. So like, have some waters. So what happens? Go if home again. To- what happens? <laughs> What happens if he had told you at 11 that you were going to go dancing and then at 12, <laughs> the plans change? Um, I don't know what I would have done. I think that, yeah, it allowed me to prep myself and it allowed me to have a good time with a group of friends. So as you may have heard in a recent patch, Josh and I have been playing with a very particular British radio announcer voice. It's the DJ from the radio, live lounge, lab, whatever you may have heard in the past, normally on BBC, but he's a very energetic, yeah. or actually he or she, because Annie Mack is doing yeah. it as well, yeah. very energetic because they're getting you into the mood for a big night. They're about to play a killer DJ set and they're just trying to ramp you up. But what are they always searching for, Josh? The drop. The drop. So Josh... As per usual, Dion and I have found a (laughs) free-to-use, no-copyright track, and we're going to see if you can introduce it and make sure that you find the drop. Okay. But don't forget, Josh, Dion and I do try to pick tracks that might trick you. Okay. So make sure you find the right (laughs) drop. Okay, all right. Yes, and welcome back here to BBC One. We'll be here with you from midnight to 2am. And boy, oh boy, we got the big tracks coming up, the big dogs. The new one from David Getter's coming out. He hasn't had a big hit for a while, has he? But boy, oh boy, get in with Sia. You'll hear some great tunes. And I'll tell you what, maybe you're going to have some beers with the friends. Maybe you're going to have some, uh, some nose beers, if you know what I mean. But we wouldn't condone that here at the BBC. No, we would not. Just have the legal drugs of alcohol. Go down to a local bottle and get those giant cans. Don't we have big cans here in London up, don't we? And you can drink on the tube, I've heard. As someone who catches the tube regularly, that's the thing that I really like to do. But no one else, when I'm drinking on the train, there are the party carriages. You head on the back. Maybe you're, maybe you're coming home late. You've had a bit too much to drink, but you don't want to spare money on that black cab. So you jump in the tube. You get with your friends and you play some great music. Get your phone out if you're on the... Anyone on the tube tonight, get your phone out. Turn it up. Put it on because tonight we're going to play some big tracks for you that are going to send those trains crazy. If you're a commuter, you're going to love this. So make sure you pull it to your stop. Two minutes till the next train. Here it comes. Now, guys, I was uh, looking through my Instagram again oh, yeah. recently, sure. and I was scrolling through, going through, saw the recent posts, and got right down, got right down, years and years and years, got right to the end, wow. and I found one from Charles Darwin, uh-huh. at Evolved Thinker. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was a photo of a sealed envelope being put into a mailbox, and it said, just sent off my saliva DNA sample to Ancestry.com, can't wait to get the genealogy results, maybe I'll finally be able to explain why I'm so hairy. <laughs> Hashtag monkey business. Hashtag viva la evolution. (laughs) Josh, similarly, I had my phone out and was scrolling like crazy. Years and years of posts. And I got all the way down to the start of Instagram. 
And I saw a post by Pablo Escobar <laughs> at Esk Space Bar. <laughs> <laughs> and and the photo was a candlelit dinner and Pablo is sitting opposite one of his friends who's smiling and leaning over his plate, which is just covered in a mountain of cocaine. <laughs> and the comment is, dinner time with this one. <laughs> Hashtag making mountains out of mole hills. <laughs> and Dion, were you scrolling through yeah, Instagram? As I well? was also scrolling, scrolling through years and years and years of Instagram, and I came across a photo of Louis Vuitton in front of his fashion college, and he was Louis Louis V. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and the caption read: "In my final year of fashion school, and looking forward to playing a practical joke on the lecturer and my classmates, just had a shocking idea for a design. Check out how bad it looks on this handbag. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag no one will buy." <laughs> Hashtag, we'll make them in China. (laughs) I recently got back from a lovely trip to Egypt and Jordan, and so I'd like to share uh, some of the tales of my adventures. So please, step into my Bedouin tent, pull into my bazaar, sit down, have a bit of tea. It's time for some Middle Eastern musings. Now, when I was over there um, in Egypt and Jordan, um, we started in Egypt, finished in Jordan, and tipping obviously came up as a thing that as Australians, we're not used to it generally and all these places. And so, as it does most trips when I'm in tipping places, you get a bit more comfortable and confident with tipping as you go. And you're like, oh, that's right. We've got to do that. And you, you kind of get a better sense of how much you should be tipping and what you should be doing. A better one sense. <laughs> <laughs> And so, I guess my broad question is, at some places where I was like, I don't really feel like we need to give a big tip to that person, but it's expected. Is it better to give no tip or to give a shit tip? (sighs) A cheap tip? Uh, neither. <laughs> Easily neither. Well, just to, just to reframe it though. So tipping happens a lot in the States because wages are really low. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get into a finance discussion here. But um, the wages in Australia are quite good. And so usually it's regarded that you don't necessarily need to tip, although it is encouraged. Yeah. But in that situation, like I think that when I'm considering it, the money is much, it's less money to me. So why not be generous with your tip? But that, yeah, that's, that's the, the interesting thing where like I, I'm, I live quite modestly. I don't feel like I'm a rich person, but when you go over there in the context of countries like that, you're like, yeah, my money's worth a lot more here. I should be able to give more mm-hmm. to other people. But then also it's like, yeah, but I can't just give heaps of money to everyone all the time. But what's heaps of money? And, what, and it's a two week trip. Three weeks. Three weeks. It's a three oh, week. That's it, heaps of money. A, <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't feel that I have enough money that every single person I get a service from, taxi drivers, guides, whatever it might be. So that's that what I it can... was. Everyone across the board had to get a tip. Well, more. that's what I'm. That's what we're thinking in our brains, right? Wow. Like, this is such this? an elitist conversation. Is it? Yeah, it is. Because like you're going to somewhere, you're going to a poor country for three weeks, just tip them. Set aside some money. How much no, then, mate? No, but Josh is asking, <laughs> do I tip them too little or yeah. just none? You find out what the local custom is and you fucking do it. So you're going to ask one of those cab drivers, hey, mate, how much do you normally get tipped? But yeah, that's the only way to work out what the local custom is. Is it, is it Christian? Well, Dean, no, a lot of our guides said, uh, we, we were like, oh, what should we tip at this place? And go, whatever you feel comfortable with. What yeah. do you say to that, Dion? I would say that look it up on the internet and find out what the appropriate tip amount is in that country. For a Westerner so paying up. for something in no, but, So you literally you look you I look would, up an average tip for I different abso- services. And I stuff. would absolutely look up. No, it'd be a, it'd be there wouldn't be it wouldn't like for restaurants it wouldn't be so different from getting your shoes shined. Restaurants <laughs> were pretty easy for because it's like oh we'll just round up pretty much you round up a little bit right. Restaurants are pretty easy. No, right? no, no, not at all. You're missing. Not at all. No, you're missing. You the don't point round of the tip. up a little it's bit. It's not a round up to them. It's their livelihood. You have, yeah, you know, you have to think of the tip as completely separate. From the meal. So really? basically, you have the meal, you pay for that, and then the tip is paying for the server. One of the things, that, the issues that came up with us, which was uh, <laughs> really kind of, it was a bit of a strange thing. Like, God oh, damn it. So we got massively ripped off in this bazaar. And we told the guy, he's like, oh, you paid way too much for that. I'm like, damn it. What'd what you buy? It? What'd you buy? Yeah. Right. Oh, I don't know if I want to talk about oh, this. Amazing. Oh, it was just like some cheap, crappy clothes and paid like, you know, 30 Australian dollars or okay. something for them. So not worth that much at all. Um, 
And so when we did that, and he laughed at our faces for a very long time about that. Oh. So then we'd had him for a few days, so it was this nice relationship. Hang we on, had. who laughed? The vendor. Taha. Our guide, Taha. Taha did a ha ha. He said she was like, "You guys are idiots." <laughs> really? Like, yeah. Did yeah. he laugh that way? Um, Taha. <laughs> <laughs> it was more tee <laughs> So anyway, Michael Jackson. <laughs> so after we'd sort of told him, after we sort of told him how much we paid for that, when we got to the end of it, I was like, "Well, we've just blown all this money on this crappy bazaar. We have to give him a great tip then that matches that at least, you know." So that sort of threw another spanner in the oh, works. Why like, you, why don't you just give him the clothes? <laughs> So you think that the tip has to be proportionate to the spend? Um, it depends. Like, so we had him for a couple of days. So just, I'll tell you, we gave him, I think it was like 60 US dollars, right? At the end of that for two days. So like 30 US a day. Okay. That felt right to us, right? And he was great. Tip or total? Tip, tip. Okay. In addition to what we'd already paid. That Which was, was That what? was direct to him. Uh, I don't know, a few hundred bucks, something like that. I can't remember. Right. It was all there. <laughs> if you really want to go into it, we can. <laughs> we'll have the workings out on there in our show notes. <laughs> so we're just working it out for ourselves, right? And so th- that was the problem then. We- we've told him, hey, we gave a bunch of money to this person who we don't yep. know, we don't care about. But to you, I was like, well, we have to give him like at least that now, right? Yep. That's really mean if we don't. Absolutely. Yeah. And how did he feel when you gave it to him? What um, was his, what did his face? A lot of them, you know, it was a bit, like a lot of them were like, oh, thank you. So- oh, that's really nice. Thank you so much. And like very reserved about oh, it, yeah. you know, and yeah. almost like, oh, that's really not necessary kind of thing. But it's like, nah, I feel it's necessary. I hate that. I hate going to a restaurant, giving a tip and getting no reaction back. Yeah. Especially when... One of the the things that I hate the most is being presented with the card machine with enter tip on it. Yeah, it's so presumptuous. It is very presumptuous, especially when it's the waiter holding it in front of you. Yeah, they should leave it with you, right? So you're fine with the yeah. card machine being left with you, but if they're like, hey, feel free to... But there's always that question, feel free to leave a tip or, or not, that's okay. <laughs> do you, do you know is it? The worst thing about it is it normally happens after all the diners have already split the bill. So they go, how much each? Yeah, 70, 70, 70. Yeah. And then you go up yeah. and go, do you have to go back to everyone and say, hey, I gave a $20 well, tip? That literally happened to me the other night. Amazing. Yeah, so I went up and then he was like, do the tip. But what he did, which is quite nice, so I was right there at the service station and he just kind of looked away up into the distance while it was there to be like, I'm not watching. You can put in anything you want. And what what confused me, right? So it was $203. Mm-hmm. And so I was, it was like tip. And I was like, oh, I'll put five bucks in. So I did 208 and it said, like, confirm, 203 base, $208 tip. And I was like, uh, I think I, I made a mistake here. That would have been I'm a close not going to give you a $208 tip. <laughs> Josh, did you consider splitting the tip? Is there a more stingy thing to do than to split a tip? I didn't. I, I thought, well, I'm just going to cop this. I'll put the extra five in and that's on me. That's fine. Oh, really? So that was on you, the extra yeah. five. And, and I, How many people were you with? Uh, I think there was like six. Four or five yeah, of us. You can't split. But that. you know what it was? It's because I've just come back from this trip. Otherwise, I would have gone, nah, uh, enter, zero. Really? See you later. You were really? conditioned. Yeah. Christian, as we've learned over the years, you're very generous, over generous, I would say, with gifts, sure. uh, with bringing uh, too many things to people's places when sure. you're showing up as a guest. Sure. Um, what's your tipping like? I uh, don't like tipping because I'm confused by it. I don't understand why it has a place in Australia. Yep. Especially when you go. Typically to a like a nice restaurant, mm-hmm. there's quite an emphasis on, hey, what are we going to tip? And I don't know what I'm tipping for because I know that the wait staff are going to be getting paid well because I've worked in those kind of places before. Slash yeah. pay their appropriate wages. <laughs> yeah. Pay their appropriate wages. Yeah, yeah, I know the kitchen... Well, hopefully they're getting yeah. paid wages. Yeah. Um, I know the kitchen staff will be paid well because it's a nice restaurant, but there's so much of a focus on how many tens of dollars are you putting towards this tip? Christian, I think it's safe to say a lot of Patchwork listeners would look up to you for advice. Um, let's say the scenario of going to an Italian restaurant, sure. uh, two glasses of wine, sure. um, pasta each. Would you like to name the pasta that you might have? <laughs> uh, I'll probably just have a, a regular Napoli. There we go. <laughs> um, so, and what would, your, what, would your, what would your friend have? Uh, I don't know, maybe in a Matriciana. <laughs> I was thinking that one. <laughs> yeah, I wanted that one. Yeah, did you want to pronounce it? Yeah, anyway, yeah. so Christian, two things of wine. So Actually, you... didn't you have a pasta shutta? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, so two glasses of wine. It comes to about let's say eighty bucks for two glasses of wine. Yeah, I'm those... I'm tipping absolutely nothing. Really? Yeah, paisans. They're a family. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get them at Christmas. <laughs> no, but I don't think I'm paying for an eighty. I'm not tipping on an eighty dollar standard bill. Why not? Be- because you don't just... It's Australia. You're not, you don't tip. But yeah. it's a percentage thing. No, it's not. It's not a percentage thing. We're not the United States. Yeah. You don't need to tip. Mm. You tip if... 
what I believe is you tip if the service was exceptional. Actually, Josh, when you said that the bill was $203 and you tip $5, I reckon that's a fuck you to the service. Well, that's what my point earlier. I was mm. like, is a low tip of $5 there on a $200 bill, is that not worth it, mate? Just make it zero. Or yeah. is that, hey, at least they gave me something. But my question, tipping generally, <laughs> Dion, especially traveling. So if you get a cab ride somewhere, yep. let's say Egypt... Yeah. What are you? What are you, are you tipping? Well, that's an expensive cab from here to Egypt. <laughs> well, and surely they don't have cabs. They've just got camels there, don't there they? Go. <laughs> no, I want to know because you seem to be Mister Tipping, saying I tip poorly. I really. So when I go overseas and I go to a poorer country, I see as an opportunity to make people smile and to spread the wealth a little bit. So I will tip very liberally when I'm overseas. But what does that mean in a real sense? In a real sense, if I had a lovely cab driver, do you know what? The when I went to Myanmar with my girlfriend, I tipped a cab driver i gave him like i think it was like five bucks i gave him like 50 bucks Jesus really Christ. i was just like i was just i had this amazing conversation with him he sounded like he was doing it really tough he was an only like he was a uh he didn't have a partner he had a daughter i just gave him 50 bucks and i was like hey this is gonna mean heaps more to you than than it does to me that's a bit different though that's not really a that's tip that's not a tip that's no. a gift to yeah. a, a person that's not a tip that's, that's, charity. A, that's a humble gloat <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you in a, in a more real Say you got a cab ride That was like 10 to 12 Australian dollars Equivalent yep. of I'd have no problem With tip, 20 bucks round figure No problem with that at all okay. So yep. why don't you When you get in an Uber Or a taxi here yeah. And you speak to the driver And they say Yeah it's pretty tough for me Why don't you give them money Um, That's a good point They, I need, they need a better story Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I feel like when I go overseas, I'm in a completely different frame of mind. But Josh, you were saying that you got stung with the with the tip at the end, which was like five dollars. You said, Wh- at what point do you go back to the group and say, "Hey, I've tipped X amount. We should split it." So five dollars? No, you're I, not going up and asking for a dollar each. No, I I think it's if it's at the point where they're not part of the discussion. It's not up to them. Yeah, it's true. Like, they need to be there and they go, hey, we should leave a tip. Consulted, and that's a yeah. group decision. If I, on my own, have decided to tip, mm-hmm. that's I'm not going to them to ask for money. And I'll, I will just make a tip that I'm comfortable personally making. Why? Why, as as the person who has incurred the, the, the cost on your card, that's it. Yeah. Why do you have to bear the onus of the tip? Because they haven't agreed to it. They might not want to leave, leave a tip. I'm not going to go, hey, guys, by the way, I tipped everyone owes me $20. It's true. It's not for Josh to make that decision. Well, go back. Ask them. them. Isn't that awful, though, then, to be like, oh, hey, guys, you need to give me now an extra $20 because I tipped. I'd be like, no, nah, I, I wouldn't have tipped $20, mate. That's not yeah. what I'm interested in. Yeah. So I just thought, here's a little bit of something because he was a nice waiter. And then I went on my way. He was a nice waiter. That's true. He deserved a tip. Made one great joke. Yeah. Deserved a tip. Honestly, that was in my brain. <laughs> yeah. But he makes a good joke. He deserves a tip. Yeah, five bucks that's pro rata. That's like <laughs> five bucks per, <laughs> per joke. The joke was like we'd have minutes. at least twenty. <laughs> <laughs> but just to get back to the broader point, are you better off not tipping at all or giving a low tip? Yeah, I think from everything that you've just said, Josh, I now lean towards don't give the tip at all. I go, I go no tip because I don't want to be seen as a sting, and say, like I'm, I'm. Not appreciating the work that the server has done. Well, that was kind of one of the biggest things throughout all of this was this weird thing of being like, well, I don't want to appear as a a bad person. I'm never seeing these people ever again. Mm. This is not following me anywhere. I love how you guys are just thinking about yourselves. It's stressful, Dion. It is so stressful. It is stressful, but you're thinking, whose money is it? I don't want to appear as a sting. It's. It's it's all about the person getting the money. It's too late. You're recording a podcast. Quite happy to get. No, but that is, it is the stressful part of like, you're coming to the end of a tour or a trip and your brain starts going, how much is this? How much are we going to give this guy? Uh, Jeez. Last thing, last free, thing. Free, free walking, walking tours. <laughs> free Shocking. walking tours. What do you do? Uh, you know that it's coming. And if, I mean, we do this for free yep. and we're entirely funded by tips. So if you wanted to give some money at the end <laughs> of the tour, feel free to drop it in, in the hat that I'm putting <laughs> on the floor here. I'm going to turn away. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? Oh, well, they keep on peeking, don't they? They keep on peeking <laughs> at that hat. Oh, yeah, peaky blinders. Um, It just depends. Like, I, I calculate, look... <laughs> how many people are there? How how much how much money is it fair for them? You also want to know like are they studying? Is it going to a good cause? Or are they drug addicts? Or and if you can and if you've got out of sight, you can just sort of squeeze out without yeah, anyone seeing you. That's true, yeah. Christian. What do you tip? You go uh, to, you go to Paris. What are you tipping for a free walking tour? So if I've had a have you lira? <laughs> if I've um, if I've had a really informative walking tour, it's like one of those you know two hour take you through everything, learn a lot. I'm probably going 15 euros. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd go about yeah. 15 euros. I think that makes that makes sense, Josh. Yeah. Um, I reckon I'd lean closer to 10, I guess. Really? Mm. I thought you'd go closer to five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that bad. I gave Taha 60 US dollars. <laughs> now look who's laughing. <laughs> you made fun of his laugh as well. Really, really good. You know what's really, really good? Really, really good. You know what's really, really good? Do you know what's really good? When you apprehensively buy something off Gumtree and the person who opens the door for you has a young child with them. (laughs) (laughs) Really good. Really good. Really good. Do you know what's really good? Receiving a massage for longer than expected. Yeah, oh, really, really, really good. good. Really, really, good. really good. Do you know what's really good? When the first t-shirt size you try on is the best fit. Yeah, really, really, good. really good, Josh. Really good. Really, really, good. Good. really good. And every fortnight we have Really Good Friday on our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram page. And the best really good will win a uh, block of chocolate from Hey Tiger Chocolate. Melbourne-based, ethically sourced chocolate. It's delicious. Um, so jump on our social media. And now for a recent winner. Do you know what Al Parker thinks is really good? Finding the start or end of a roll of sticky tape with little to no fuss. Oh, really, <laughs> really good, 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 really good, really good. good. Really good. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Welcome to Patrick this week. Um, we would love one thing from you. Christian, what's that thing? We would love everyone to smile more. Yeah, we want everyone <laughs> to smile. Big smiles now. And the smile should be accompanied with, hey, have you heard this podcast? It's Welcome to Patchwork. It's really good. We would love you to tell a friend about our podcast. It's the way that we can grow and learn. <laughs> We also have a Patreon page. If you would like to fiscally support uh, this podcast, you can do so for as little as a couple of dollars a month. If you go to www.patreon.com forward slash welcome to patchwork, um, check it out. There's some really cool stuff there. As you mentioned before, Dion, we also have an Instagram, a Facebook and Twitter, which we post on regularly. So make sure you check them out. And as we do every week, we sew a new patch into our quilt of friendship. Josh. What patch did you sew this week? Thank you, Dion. My patch this week is you taking all the toilet doors off their hinges in the bathroom and leaving a very generous tip for the attendant. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, what patch did you sew this week? Josh, this week I sewed into my patch Taha the tour guide tallying up his terrible tips after tirelessly guiding Josh through the streets of Cairo. <laughs> <laughs> and Dion, what did you sew into your patch this week? My patch this week is Josh at a market in Egypt getting ripped off buying a handbag, only to come back to Australia to realise it's 100% genuine Louis Vuitton. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you very much for listening to Welcome to Patchwork this week. I've been Dion. I've been Josh. And I've been Christian. Goodbye. 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 Zuki, this is good fiery. Yeah, what is You, be, you better have a good fucking thing. think about this. I haven't even read the fucking thread. Um, I made a show a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, That's bullshit! <laughs> <laughs>